So a few of the gentlemen here in Holy Family and myself, we were having a, a wee bit of a, a chat there a couple of days ago about uh, masculinity and becoming a man and what it means to be a man and that. And what's very, very interesting uh, about this whole discussion is that it's never had, you know what I mean? One would imagine that in this day and age, considering how much information we have and considering how easily accessible information is, that, you know, how, how one grows from being a boy to being a man should be fairly well established by now. I mean, we've been doing it, one would imagine, for a couple of million years. So one would imagine we'd have a fairly good handle on it by now, but apparently not, apparently not. Uh, so it's, it's actually, it was, it was really good for us to talk about these things and to listen to the wisdom of the church and the wisdom of the saints. St. Paul here talks about uh, self-control versus uh, the situation that we see out there, which is, is, is absolute chaos, self-indulgence, right? So self-indulgence versus self-control. So self-indulgence versus life in the spirit. Okay, now, if you can reverse back there a couple of decades, what would one have considered to be manly back in the day? Right, so back in the day, like we're talking, well, let's aim for the late 50s, right, late 50s. What would have been considered manly? Well, probably a shirt and tie for a start, right? Maybe the Brill Cream, any of you gentlemen remember that? The grease back Brill Cream, or the, what was that guy's name? That this, I, all, I'm thinking of all these actors from the you know, black and white movies, and they all had the nice, uh, not comb-overs, but side partings uh, with the Brill Cream, and everything was kind of, you know, uh, on point. And suits, right? Suits, well-ironed shirts, and a suit with the whole crease down the front of the trouser leg, like it had just been pressed, uh, yeah, under a steamroller. So, anyway, so this, this, these was, this was considered manly. Oh, hats, hats, remember them? They were great, right, a hat. But of course the hat had to kind of, had to kind of match the suit and all this kind of thing. Now we might say, what's, okay, what's manly about this? Well, there were other things that were kind of manly, right? Uh, you can imagine you're wearing your suit, you're wearing your, well, you don't wear the hat inside, you take the hat off and you put it wherever you're supposed to put it, on the coat hanger, that's where it's supposed to be, on the coat hanger. And then when you're eating your meal, you know what I mean? Fork in the left hand, knife in the right hand, unlike in America. Uh, and, and you know, you eat with, with some amount of grace and poise and dignity, okay? Uh, you know, oh, no, no, that's just, you know, wouldn't be considered very manly. And what's interesting is when you look at these somewhat superficial things and try and get to the root, what's behind this? What is it that makes this manly, right? As opposed to someone who kind of turns up in their tracksuit or pajamas, unshaven, hair kind of tossed and goes, well, boys, I want a burger. What, what is it like? Why, why is one considered manly and the other not? See, often we don't kind of reflect on these things. We just see kind of the end product, but, but forget what, what's leading to this. I think what makes the first look more manly, right, is actually self-control, right? The guy got up on time to clean himself, shave himself, get his hair in order, to actually get a tie that wasn't too busy, according to the shirt, you know, busy tie, plain shirt, Busy shirt, plain tie, apparently. Um, and, you know, to actually put some thought into what he was wearing, right? Actually ironed his pants or arranged for someone to iron them. Either way, pants were ironed, you know, and then turns up and has a bit of self-control to not eat like a slob. So it, what's behind it, actually, is the virtue of self-control. Isn't it interesting? Because, like, you know, it, it looks, it, we, we, we look at it and we say, that, that, that looks masculine. As opposed to, as I say, like, if you think of what's encouraged for men to wear today, right? Jeans with, you buy them with holes in them. You, you, you buy them torn. Imagine trying to explain that to my, my grandparents. All of them have passed away now. I, 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 that would be an, an amazing conversation. Granny, yeah, see, I bought these trousers. They're new. What do you think? Oh, they have holes in them. Shocking. Will I, will I, will I patch them up for you? No. They're supposed to be that way. Oh, but sure. You must have got them for half not. No, they're actually there. Top of the range Levi's, they were 90 euro. 90 euro? God bless us and save us. I think you're after getting, you're after getting, you're after being had, my friend. Like, there's no way she could understand why you'd possibly buy clothes that are already pre-wrecked, okay? 
or again, it's not very gentlemanly to turn up in a tracksuit. Again, why? Well, because you've clearly like put no thought, you've put no thought into, into what you wear. Have you any self-control? Self-control. And then, again, if you're, if you're an employer and two people present themselves like that, one kind of well-dressed and, and the other in a tracksuit, I'm going to give the job to the, the guy in the suit 10 out of 10 times because he looks like he can actually... Uh, the, maybe the guy in the tracksuit is actually more capable, but he sure doesn't look it, you know? So there's something about self-control which we actually gra gravely underestimate today, especially in masculinity, because... For men, we're, we're, we're told over and over and over and over and over again, even our powers are yesterday, always in the dentist, uh, and the radio was on. So there were, just, there were some songs playing, and as I was sitting there, my gob open and getting hoovered, getting my, my face hoovered off, um, I was just listening to the radio, and I think I must have heard four or five songs while I was there. Every single one of them spoke about, don't want to be lonely tonight, just want to da 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 oh my. Goodness, like every single song was about intimacy. Every single one. Like this is absolutely ridiculous. You know. So we're told over and over again that the way to find happiness, the way to, to be realized as a man is to self-indulge, to give in to these impulses and thoughts as regards relationships, as regards alcohol, as regards just your life, you know what I mean? Just just like like watch lots of TV, play loads of computer games, it's awesome. And that's it, that's what we're told now is masculine. Then, then you do that and you wonder why at 26, 27, 30 years of age, what do they call them? You've got man babies. You know, <laughs> and you'll see this all the time, right? Just keep an eye on the traffic if it, as car, cars driving past, right? You'll have the lady who got herself together, got her, got her education, has a job, probably driving a Nissan Micra or a, a Hyundai 130, right? And you've got the boyfriend beside her in the tracksuit on the phone, you see this all the time. He's in the tracksuit on his phone because he hasn't got a job because he was busy gaming. <laughs> right? He hasn't got his life together. He hasn't manned up. He could be mid-20s, late-20s, late and is still basically a man baby because we've never learned discipline, self-control. Man up, shut up, and get it done. <laughs> get stuck in hard work, push on through, and get it done. That's what you do. You know what I mean? Uh, was it, I think I mentioned this a while ago, but Fulton Sheen says that what makes a man a man, so what, what helps us to, to grow from being just boys to, to men, is uh, pain, right? Pain, suffering, and what was the other one? Self-control, isn't it? Whoops. Huh? Responsibility, thank you. Uh, uh, pain, so like, that's why we think of like, you know, hurling training, football training, you know, being out there in the cold, pushing on through. You think of farmers, you know, you think of, you know, you know itches or whatever it is, like, it hurts and you get blisters and, you know, you get bruises and stuff. Uh, but it actually helps you grow up. And then responsibility, that I can be given something and see it through, you know? Because like, you can imagine these, all these man babies out there now, they're, they're up Stairs playing FIFA 2020. Almost finished my campaign. Almost finished the season. And then mom roars up to their 25-year-old man baby. Johnny, put out the rubbish. Oh, put out the rubbish. Roll yourself. <laughs> right? Do you know, like, would you grow up? I, I even, there's a friend of mine now who has a, a, a man baby husband. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, when he gets a new PlayStation game, she says, when he gets a new PlayStation game, I become a PlayStation widow. Yeah. That's how she described herself, a PlayStation widow, because it'll take him whatever it is, three or four weeks to finish the game. And then she, heavily pregnant, is out there cutting the lawns, putting out the rubbish, cutting ditches while he's inside. Do you know what I mean? And he goes, this, this is insane. Now, this isn't, you know, I'm not saying any of this to, to, be, to be funny. This is actually the, 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 the reading of today. That's a self-indulgent life. I, I, I feel I should do this, so I'll just, I'll just go do it. And obviously our feelings are going to lead us to do whatever is easier and whatever is more comfortable and the path of least resistance. That's what our feelings will lead us to. Right? So this is why like, we never make moral decisions based on feelings. 
You make moral decisions based on fact. You make moral decisions based on what's objectively right and wrong, not on what feels good. Because the easiest path of adultery feels great, like. Do you know what I mean? It just feels, oh, it's great, like. Wife at home, she doesn't, she doesn't understand me at all. This young lady here does, so my feelings are over here. You know, like, you, you never make moral decisions based on feelings. Brain. If you are led by the Spirit, no law can touch you. When self-indulgence is at work, the results are obvious. So when self-indulgence is at work, the results are obvious. Fornication, check. <laughs> Compared to today's world, you know, fornication, check. Uh, gross indecency, check. All right, sexual irresponsibility, check. Idolatry uh, of the, the human body and how we should look and our beauty and all this kind of thing, check. Sorcery, there's a bit of that in there too. Uh, feuds and wrangling, jealousy, bad tempers, quarrels, disagreements, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and similar things. 2,000 years ago, years ago this was written. Bang on, appropriate for today. Have we learned? Have we grown up at all? Now, co compare that then to, to life in the spirit. What the spirit brings is very different. Love, which, by the way, it, we always have to understand in, in Christian terms, love is self-sacrificial. When we say love, it's not about feelings, you see. Um, we have to kind of reclaim that word in, 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 in Catholic theology or in Christian mentality. Uh, love doesn't mean, oh, just butterflies and stuff. Butterflies live about a week and then they die and they rot. Uh, so, um, so we're not talking about butterflies here. We're talking about the decision to sacrifice myself for the other, to place the other above myself. And oh, God willing, they're doing the same for me. They're placing me above them. So we're, it's, a bo it's kind of this mutual self sacrificial, self-giving love. I mean, that, that's beautiful. That's, that's Jesus on the cross. All right, this love for his people, so he sacrifices himself. That's love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustfulness, gentleness, and self-control. See, so uh, self-indulgence, it's, it's the opposite to what we should be as human beings, and it's the opposite to what we should be as men. You know, giving in to all of our passions makes us less, less of a man. You're just a big child. That's what, that's what children do. I want an ice cream. <laughs> I want my phone. I want my tracksuit. Right. That's, that's what children do. Whereas a man is able to say, I'd really like to sleep right now, but my family need me to get this wall built, cut this grass. You know, a, a woman, as opposed to a girl, will say, you know, I need to, I'm wrecked now, but I, I will get up and change my child's nappy because the child needs it. Do I feel butterflies in my stomach with love? I'm getting up and at two o'clock in the morning for the sixth time? No, there ain't no butterflies there. But you sacrifice yourself for love of the other. And that's what makes us into men and women as opposed to boys and girls. That's what makes us grow up. You know, dare I say, pain and responsibility. So it's, it's a good thing for people to, to push on through difficult experiences. Even here in Holy Family, we have a, a couple of ponds out the back. And what's wonderful is, especially after storms, the ponds get full of silt and maggots and uh, weeds and all sorts of debris, leaves and all sorts of things go in there. And it's a great job to say, right lads, we're mucking out the ponds. And some of the, some of the, 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 the lads go, mud. <laughs> and others go, oh my goodness. You know, but it's in, in they get and they're shoveled. And then like, at the end of it, then you've got this, these beautiful ponds that look amazing. It was hard work. It's a bit mank, uh, but it, it helps you to grow up. Just get the job done. Job needs to be done. Do it. Get over yourself. And uh, and so sometimes, like as I say, in our in our in our world today now, which is it's just so comfortable. Everything is so comfortable and so easy. We think that discomfort is evil. We think that discomfort is wrong. We think that discomfort is bad for kids. I'm not saying obviously you know, we should make them sit on a bed of nails or anything, but. Um, like for, for, for young men, for teenagers, you know, to be told, you know, wash down the yard, clean the car, you know, hoover it out, um, clean your room, <laughs> right? Or hoover the landing, hoover the house, clean out the bathroom. These are actually good things to do. You know, it's actually good to teach a guy responsibility. And then if he doesn't do it well, back in. That's what you call that, <laughs> if it's not done right. It's actually, it helps us to grow up. It helps us to grow up. And there's, there's a bit of pain involved, there's a bit of self-renunciation involved, because I'd rather be playing computer games. Uh, 
but it helps me to grow. The pain and the responsibility helps me to become a man. We take those things, that, 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 that pushing on through suffering, pushing on through adversity. If I never learn to do that, I'll never be a man. Because as soon as, adver in a marriage, as soon as there's a misunderstanding or a difficulty, oh, I can't do this anymore, she's, she's not listening to me, and, you know, it's just not working, I'm out of here. Voila. You know, if we never learn to push on through difficulty, marriage will never survive. Never. You'll never be a good dad either. So, self control works. Life in the spirit works. It blesses us, from, and I'm speaking from a man, man's perspective, it blesses us as men to become men. It blesses the family then because then the family has a bit of solidity. It has, there's this competition almost of, of self-sacrificial love between the, the, the mom and the dad. The kids see that and they, 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 they want to be part of it. <laughs> they see the self-sacrificial love. It creates a wholesome society. It creates a healthy church. It creates a healthy priesthood. So much hinges on whether we as men actually grow up, man up, and learn self-control. So we pray to the Lord today through the intercession of St. Joseph, who is a vote of Mass we're taking today. We pray for a restoration of, of masculinity, of manhood, that we as men will understand our role, our call, that we will see in St. Joseph this self-sacrificial man who knew how to love chastely, who knew how to serve, who knew how to give of himself for love of his family and for love of God. Amen.